You are listening to the Toxic Mold Podcast with Steve Worsley, the toxic mold expert and your number one source for mold consulting and mitigation in the USA. Let's dive into a brand new episode. Before we get started on this episode, here's a not so short disclaimer. While all attempts have been made to verify the content provided in this podcast, neither the podcaster or the producers assume any responsibility for errors, omissions, or alternative interpretations of the issues discussed here. All information stated in this podcast is the opinion of Steve Worsley. Steve Worsley is a mold specialist with over 25 years of experience in the construction and mold industry. The Toxic Mold Podcast is for information sharing purposes only. The views expressed are those of the podcaster and his alone. These views should not be taken as expert instruction or commands. While there may be references to medical conditions and symptoms, all podcast episodes are the opinion of Steve Worsley and any medical questions or concerns shall be addressed with the appropriate licensed medical professional or professionals. As the podcaster refers to different mold types, please be aware that Steve Worsley is not a microbiologist and questions concerning mold specifics should be answered by the appropriate professional. Steve isn't nor does he offer any legal advice. For any legal advice, you must speak with a lawyer. The listener is 100% responsible for his or her own actions. You can check out Steve's books on Amazon. Just go to Amazon and search for author Steve Worsley. You can also take Steve's courses on Udemy or Skillshare, and you can find out more about those at cnccontractorservices.com. Now, let's get to the episode. Hello, you're listening to the Toxic Mold Podcast with myself, Steve Worsley, and we have my wife, Cassandra. It's uh, another, what, 10 days or so till the end of this month and Halloween. Oh, that's right. So we're inching closer to the end of the year. It's kind of crazy. It's very crazy, actually. Anyhow, so today's topic is something that I get asked about quite often, and it's because I'm, well, I don't think it's because of this, but I'm a certified home inspector and I'm a certified mold inspector. But a lot of people say, well, you know, I hired a a home inspector when we bought our house. Shouldn't they have done this, this, and this when it comes to the mold side of things? And I just kind of chuckle and like, no, you hired a home inspector. Yeah. They know what their criteria is and it doesn't have to include mold and they don't have the expertise to really properly assess mold. Exactly. And, you know, even when I did home inspections all the time, yeah, I did. I was a certified mold inspector and I did, you know, testing if my clients wanted it, but I was only charging them for a home inspection. And a home inspection you know, on a home inspector, they're classified as a generalist. They're not a specialist. Whereas, in my opinion, a mold inspector would be a mold specialist. Correct. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think sometimes people expect generalists to do specialist work. Exactly. And, you know, for the most part, obviously, for mold inspections, I charge much more than a home inspector would charge. Now, it's obviously a totally different type of inspection. But my point is, is, you know, for our listeners, when you're, you know, hiring a home inspector, when you're buying a new home, just keep in mind that they're not, and I'm not saying none of them are, but they're not specialized in mold like a mold inspector would be. So when should somebody opt to bring in both a home inspector and a mold inspector? I guess maybe that if I'm I'm thinking like somebody who's either buying a house or just bought a house, when do you need both? When do you know which one to bring in first, second? How does all that work? Well, I think a lot of it depends on the listener and, you know, if they're mold sensitive or even if they're not, you know, I guess to answer that simply is, is if you're mold sensitive and you're really concerned about the mold side, you do need to get a mold inspector. Now, another part of that answer is as a home inspector, as a generalist, just like your GP, their job is to come in and identify defects that would warrant a specialist. You know, maybe it's not even a mold specialist. Maybe it's an HVAC technician. Maybe it's a plumber. Maybe it's an electrician. Maybe it's a pest inspector. My point is, is that you should always get the home inspector there. If you're buying a new home, you should have the home inspector there. Then if they see things that 
you know, throws any red flags with mold, and then the mold inspector comes in. But like I just said with our listeners, if you're mold sensitive, you know, you know, you listen to this podcast, so you probably know a lot more about mold than most people do. You, There's nothing wrong with hiring both. What would you say are the major differences between mold inspectors and home inspectors? I think sometimes people look at, like lump them together and think they're exactly the same. So how would you explain the differences? Well, a mold inspector, like when I do, when I do mold inspections. Like I said, I'm a certified home inspector. So I inspect it like a home inspector would, but I'm zoned in more on, you know, things that can cause moisture intrusion or things like that. But to answer your question, a mold inspector is going to do, you know, air testing, mold testing, whether it's ERMI or EMA. Most most professionals, we don't do ERMI testing. We do EMA. But they understand and know how to test for mold, and they should know how to test for mycotoxins. Whereas a home inspector probably doesn't, hasn't had the certification or training of a mold inspector and doesn't not just coming on the job site or the home, they don't have all the apparatus and equipment to test for mold. Exactly. And not only do they probably not have, you know, the equipment or the testing kits, they probably don't have the tools either. You know, as as a home inspector, most home inspectors should have an infrared camera. They probably have humidity gauges, but they probably don't have you know, bore scopes and moisture meters and things like that. Does that make sense? It does. Let me ask you a different question, though. I I noticed that a lot of home inspectors are now trying to get into the mold inspection area. And I noticed that a lot of home inspectors are saying, well, we can now offer you the home inspection and mold testing, but they don't know how to interpret the results from a lab. So like, what do you say? Like, I, because I do think there, I do think mold inspectors have to have some extra skill sets mm-hmm. that home inspectors don't. It's not just, can they do the mold testing? Even if they have all the equipment, it's, can they actually interpret the results from the lab? And can they help the client understand those results and what that means for their home? Yeah. And it's, it's interesting you say that because, you know, I say this all the time to you and to my clients, but anybody can go out and buy the the equipment that we use. I mean, it's not like you have to have some special license or anything to buy it. But what you brought up is very interesting is how do they, do they know how to interpret the results? And most of them have no clue. Well, yeah, because I think sometimes uh, people who are in an adjacent field, like they could be a carpet cleaning business, they could be a home inspector by trade. They think that getting into mold is as simple as becoming a locksmith, right? You just get people out of jam, but there's no aftermath to that. Right. And it's not that simple, I guess, is my point. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, the thing is with mold testing, you know, I like to compare things a lot of times to the medical field. And if you go do like a full panel blood work, you know, this is just my blue collar side of seeing it this way. So for the medical professionals that are listening, I'm not being degrading at all. But most of the lab reports, it's pretty cut and dry. Like, you know, if your blood glucose is what, over seven, that's not good. If your uric acid's over something, that's not good. That's not how mold testing works. And there are labs that will, and one of them that we use, Sporesight, they actually they more or less interpret the the mold results, which can be a good thing. But on the other hand, it could be a bad thing too, because they're not there on site. They don't know why we're doing the testing we're doing. But my point is, is, you know, there are things you can see in the lab results that of course are red flags. But on the other hand, if you don't know what you're looking at, like I look at these all the time and I know what we should be seeing, what we shouldn't. I know if we see certain mold types that it's automatically red flags flags for water damage. I know other mold types that if they're high could be a red flag, but other inspectors think that that's fine because it's a common mold. So to address your question is it is very common for even some mold inspectors to not even know how to interpret the results. 
Correct. And, and I guess, so it leads me to the question of how does somebody listening to this thinking, oh, well, I need a home inspector and I need a mold inspector and I'm not sure which one. How do they know how knowledgeable either of those fields are, that the, person? The only way you would really know is call the inspector. Okay. I mean, looking at their website, I mean, anybody can put whatever logos and whatnot on their website. They could hire somebody. I mean, they could have hired someone like me that actually told them what to put on a website. But at the end of the day, that inspector doesn't know what they're talking about. You have to call them, honestly. Not not their, you know, assistant or secretary or the owner. Like, talk to the actual inspector that's going to be doing the inspection. I think that's a good point, I think. But in order to do that effectively and ask the tough questions, I think it begins with the person having enough education and mold to know what they're asking and what the right answer yeah. should be. That's where you've built, like, the the micro mycotoxin prevention kit. You've built Mold 101 as a digital product where people are educated. Because if I don't actually know what the answer should be, I could ask the tough question, but I really wouldn't know if I was getting yeah. the right answer. Then that's a good point. You know, for our listeners, maybe they're like, well, what questions do we ask? Like we were talking about earlier, you have to hire somebody or have somebody that believes in mold sickness. Like ask them, can mold make people sick? And like, see, and, and, and here's the other piece. I mean, I do think there's an alignment piece where we were just talking about how finding the right general contractor to build a house for a person, it's kind of like dating. You got to make sure that both parties line up on their, their way of thinking about this massive project. I think mold is kind of the same. Yeah. Like, no, are you hiring a home inspector who thinks mold's not an issue and you just, you know, clean it with bleach? I mean, yeah. I mean, but you have to be educated enough as a consumer of the inspection to know where you stand on mold, but also what the right answers for your situation should be. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, it's no different than let's say you've had your knee worked on surgery on it a couple times. You're reaching out to an ortho and you, you want to ask like, you know, have you dealt with this, this, and this? If, if they don't have the answers to your questions, you, that's kind of a red flag. And, you know, like things you can ask the inspector, you know, we haven't talked about this yet, but you know, when I do mold inspections, it's an all day thing. Yes, it is. And I mean, the last one I just did was till after eight at night. It was a very all day thing. It was like an 11 hour inspection, mm -hmm. but you know, I plan for that. And I think the reason why they take so long is, is because I like to educate too. But I guess my point is, is for our listeners, ask the inspector, like how long does the inspection take? And if it's a home inspector and they're like, oh, about two hours, that's maybe okay. Run, like, run. Yeah. But, but if it's a mold inspection, like it takes me two hours just to do the roof and the attic. Like that's, and you know, maybe the outside, but my point is, is it should take four to five hours. Correct. And, and I think it's really important that as a consumer, we understand that when it comes to any sort of work related to our health, giving people the benefit of the doubt is not always a good thing. Meaning if you call somebody to do a mold inspection, just inquiring about what it costs and they take you to, they take two weeks to get back to you. You don't need another red flag. Right. Like that's a big enough red, like you haven't even asked them to do anything. You're asking because you might become their client and it takes them two weeks. That's, that's, you don't need to try to ha use them to learn that now it takes you six weeks to get a mold report back. Yeah. And I've, I've had, you know, people in discovery calls and clients that say, yeah, I'm not going to go with this guy. And we're talking about IEPs, so mold specialists, because it takes six weeks to get my report. And mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, like, that's kind of an issue. You know, you should, and I guess for our listeners, you should have your report. Now, once again, it does take me obviously some time to get the reports done, but most of the time I'm waiting on the lab to get the lab results because that's part of the report. But my point is for the listeners, like it shouldn't take two weeks to get your report. Now, if you're doing something like an AMA test, it might take that long, but you know, it, for my clients, they might not have the written report, but when I do the mold inspection on site, 
I go over everything with them on site. So they know, you know, mm-hmm. what's going on. But but those are some good examples of what people should be vetting for. Right. So if you're going to hire somebody to come do a mold inspection, you should ask them, what do your mold reports look like? What do they show? Is it just the res- just only the results from the lab? Or are you giving me an interpretations response in addition to the report? Like, right. as consumers, we have to know what we want and we have to feel... Like we can ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's a good point to bring up because if all I do is go do the inspection, go over it with my client, and then when I get the lab results, all I do is send that to them. That's it's not helpful. No, not at all. Because, you know, you kind of need a report to go back on. Let's say two years down the road, you have a mold issue. You can go back to my report and be like, oh, yeah, Steve said this flat grading and drainage could allow moisture intrusion into a home. And, yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. And I also think, you know, to go back to what we talked about, that finding the right people to work with is sort of like dating. You have to ask them what their philosophy is on mold in general. Yeah. You don't want anybody, if you believe that mold sickness is real, if you believe that you're suffering from mold sickness, if you believe that your house is making you sick, the last thing you need is a home inspector or a mold inspector who thinks, ah, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, for our listeners, one of the biggest red flags would be you reach out to your potential mold inspector and they say, yeah, we do mold testing, but mold's everywhere. Well, yeah. You can kind of just assume they don't think mold's a problem. And that that also applies to doctors. You want to know any doctor who's working with you on the mold side of your health, you need to see what their take is on mold before you decide they're the doctor for you. That also applies to general contractors, yeah. which most people don't think about. Yeah. If you're going to build a home, even if you don't have any mold, you have no thoughts of mold, you should ask them what their take is and on how they do the construction with mold prevention in mind. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, very important important things that uh, that we talked about. So, you know, my call to action for our listeners is don't just assume your home inspector is qualified to address your mold concerns. Because most of the time they're not. They're exactly. generalists. Yep. We talked about earlier the uh, mycotoxin prevention kit. We have that available on the website. Uh, just go to cnccontractorservices.com. Is, there's a tab, right? For... There is a tab. There's also opportunities to educate yourself through the mold 101 digital bundle. We're going to be building more digital bundles, but I would say first things first, before you choose anybody, make sure you're educated and you can learn more about the mycotoxin prevention kit at cnccontractorservices.com. Perfect. Well, I appreciate all you listeners. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to this episode. Make sure you go to our website at cnccontractorservices.com and sign up for the mold investigation checklist. Again, go to cnccontractorservices.com and get your free mold investigation checklist today. You can also on cnccontractorservices.com find out more about Steve's courses and books and consultations. Once again, go to cnccontractorservices.com.